plenty of space up front and a fair bit of room in the back too. There's enough room for two Swedish backpacking twins that you might find along the side of the highway. That was unnecessarily specific, I guess, but what I'm trying to say is you could fit them in if you needed to. Welcome to Translogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We live in a world where EVs have become more and more ubiquitous. From city to country, they're everywhere, and it looks like they're here to stay. But luckily for us, it's not just the big automakers that are riding the wave. All over the world, there are little guys trying to get in on the action. Case in point, Shockwave Motors, Defiant, EV3. I'm here with John McMillan, the founder and designer over at Shockwave Motors. John, is it fair to say that you've had an obsession with cars since you were a wee tacker? Oh, it is very fair to say that. Yeah? Yes. How old were you when you first got started? First got started when I was about five years old. I remember my father, my earliest memories of that was he was, we were on a kitchen floor working on a car starter motor right. that he was going to put on a little pedal tractor that I had. Wow. Which, of course, you know, electric toys are every place for kids these days yep. and have been. But this was the late 50s. So we're here to see the Defiant EV3. Mm -hmm. How long has this project been going on for? Yeah, we started out about seven years ago developing our proof of concept electric roadster okay. just to show we could do what we say we're gonna do. Yep. And now it's evolved into a more finished product. Was the goal always to have a car that looked as unique as the Defiant does? We feel like a lot of electric cars don't have a lot of style to them. Some do, of course. Right. But some kind of look like a phone booth on wheels to us. Yep. And so we wanted to have something that would, would catch an eye gives people attention and say, hey, that's cool. I mean, it looks kind of like a 30s roadster. And that's the style we were going for, kind of a classic old school roadster look. Three wheel design. Nowadays, most people go the two in the front and the one in the rear. How have you fixed the stability issues? Regardless of where the, the wheels are, if you have a wide track and most of the weight over those wheels, it's gonna be stable. And that's exactly what we've done. We've got a six foot wide track. Yep. We've got about 70, 75% of the weight right over those rear wheels as well. So this is the Defiant EV3. I've been seeing this thing online. It has that really old, old rose to look, and it looks fantastic. I always am skeptical, though, whenever I see a three-wheel design car. My first impressions are, this car's not turning over anytime soon. It's not gonna roll and lift the back wheel. I think that with a car like this, your biggest issue would be understeer. Oh, tight turn, tight turn, tight turn. Oh, okay. And handled that okay. Not bad. Is it a car? It's not a car, per se. Yeah. It's, it's, it's technically a motorcycle, and actually a new classification is being developed called auto cycle. So an auto cycle has an enclosed compartment, typically either with a hard top or a roll bar around it, protecting the driver and occupants. Now yours has and both, doesn't it? Has it has both. The top comes off, and we have a roll bar protecting people. Yep. That means you don't have to wear a helmet? A lot of states are saying no. Okay. That you don't have to wear a helmet, you don't even have to have a motorcycle endorsement. Is it right. required to undergo safety testing like cars? No, there are no requirements to crash test auto cycles. Okay, so that's going to make it easier for you to get this project off the ground, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. And the range? The range is going to be between 80 and 100 miles. Yep. And then what really sets us apart, though, is we can plug into any standard 120 volt outlet anywhere. Eight or nine hours later, you've got a full recharge. What about level two charging? We're going to make that an option. Yeah. And in that case, it'll actually recharge in about half the time of a Nissan Leaf. So we're talking three, four hours, something like that. How do you reduce the charging time so much? It is lightweight, aerodynamic, yep. less rolling resistance, so we don't need as much power to get down the road. Okay. So that lets us have a smaller battery pack. Okay, zero to 60 times, do we have uh, any idea? 10, 12 seconds, something 10, like that. Seconds. It's, it's, okay. not, it's not a race car. Yeah. I love the cockpit. It's kind of like a jet fighter cockpit. It's got this narrow feel to it. It's certainly spacious enough. I'm six foot one. I've got my legs stretched out in front of me. I've got plenty of room to shove my elbows up on both windows. And, you know, if I needed to, two seats in the back there, which is plenty of room for two full-sized adults. So this one's got a four-speed gearbox because it's currently a prototype. Production version will have a two-speed gearbox because all I'm really using is second gear. I can take off in second gear. I can do pretty much everything I need to do in this car in second gear until I hit the freeway. Once I hit the freeway, then I'm gonna wanna pop it into third gear, which is just gonna give me a little extra top speed. Oh, popped out of gear again. This gearbox needs a little bit of, bit of work. 
So how close is the Defiant to being production ready? If we had the appropriate financial backing, we could be ready in about six to nine months. How do you hope to achieve that goal and, and raise that money? Ideally, we'd find one or two other investors who'd help us move forward. Yep. But there's been some recent changes that allow people to go to sites like Indiegogo and GoFundMe and so forth. You actually can have a person go and buy equity into the, into the company. Okay. So you become a shareholder, essentially. Yeah, instead of things like, like you say, GoFundMe or Kickstarter, where I could throw in 50 bucks or 100 bucks and get, you know, a t-shirt or something. Something in the mail, thank you, Leo. You're actually saying, buy a part of my company. This is something that's brand new, it's yeah. just changed. How much are we gonna be selling them for? The Fine's gonna have an initial price of 24,950. Right. That's a base price. Okay. And then if you want bigger battery options or other things, of course, like any other options, that, that'll add to it a little bit. 25,000 is not cheap. No. Is that gonna be a tough sell, do you think? Or are you gonna look for a different type of customer? Well, we are looking for somebody who is interested in a, in a smaller vehicle and for commuting purposes. One thing we've got going for us is the fact that because the way it's designed, it's very easy to maintain. The Roadster costs about two cents a mile for electricity costs. Okay. And then it costs about four cents a mile when you include battery depreciation. You drive it normally like you would a regular car to work, it actually has a payback period of about six years. It's a little on the noisy side, but again, prototype. So it's not a finished version. This is basically an idea of what this car auto cycle can be. And whilst at $25,000, the Defiant E3 might be a little bit of a tough sell, for someone who's looking for something completely different that may find the current crop of EVs a touch on the ugly side, this may be the car for you. Is it directed at the kind of person that wants to go to the coffee shop and have people say, oh, what's this? I guarantee you, you drive that Roadster, you're gonna put a smile on your face and everybody else's who looks at you. Have you had a good response as far as that's concerned? Oh, most definitely. People yeah. sit behind and go, wow, and our eyes light up. This is so cool. Well, another EV notch on the old TransLogic belt, but it's rare that we get to drive one that looks so unique. And we've got to take our hats off to John and his crew because designing and financing any type of new vehicle is no small feat. And we really hope to see the Defiant EV3 go into production in the very near future. For TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time. We actually pronounce it McMillian. McMillian? McMillian, not McMillian. McMillian? McMillian. 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 McMillian? <laughs> McMillan. McMillan. Yeah. McMillan. McMillan. Thank Did you, sir. Right? McMillan. Better. Thank okay. you, sir.